Welcome to Let's Talk Money, Honey, the podcast where we break down the barriers to financial success. I'm Elise Levy here with Holly Henry, and we're your hosts, two financial advisors on a mission to demystify investing, unravel the complexities of money, and sprinkle a little wisdom into your life. Whether you're a seasoned investor or just dipping your toes into the world of finance, join us once a month as we discuss how to navigate life's financial twists and turns. Just remember, building wealth and living your best life should be empowering, not intimidating. So listen up and let's talk money, honey. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Money, Honey. Today on our mini episode, we're going to be talking cash and cash alternatives. So Holly, why don't you kick us off? Yes. So one of the favorite things that Elise and I, when we talk about cash alternatives, it is a high yield savings account. And for us, we just feel like if you do not have one of these for like your emergency fund, you're just leaving money on the table. Interest rates are higher right now than normal. And so getting this money, um, at least expect over probably 4% right now. And it's just, it's free money. For me personally, um, this goes back to episode one when Elise and I were talking about being very intentional with your finances. And I even had to rein myself in a little bit because it was very easy for me to just keep my money as is. But then I looked at my savings account and realized I was drawing like, I don't know, point zero nothing. Um, and I had to force myself to take time and get a high yield savings account. Um, I mean, Elise, do you feel like you struggle sometimes yourself on like being intentional with your money? Oh, yeah. And I think it's it's easy to worry about everyone else's money. And, you know, our list is long and we're trying to take care of all of our clients. And then at the end of the day, when we come home, it's the last thing we want to do is worry about ourselves. So exactly what Holly said, it's really easy to get caught up and forget to do things for ourselves. Yeah. And you know, and I think, I think some people feel like it's probably not worth it. It's probably in the end, they may be getting 40 or $50 a quarter or whatever. But my whole thinking is, is take that money and throw it on your debt. Mm -hmm. Like put it to something that's of good use. If you have kids, put it towards a college fund. I mean, just take that money and again, be very intentional with it because it is, it's basically, I'm going back to like the, um, what is it? The women money? <laughs> what is oh, girl math. Girl math. <laughs> it's free money. <laughs> like take it and, and like earmark it and do something productive with this. And, and for Elise and I, you know, like we try and stretch everyone's dollars as far as we can, but what's the point in us getting you investing again, if you're still leaving money on the table? Yeah, absolutely. And it's just, you know, it may seem small, but over time, it really snowballs and you're able to make some, yes. support, some exactly. good money off of that instead of leaving it alone in a 0 0.001 account. Yes. Um, and it's a good place to put your emergency fund or if you have a sinking fund. And what are those? I know we talk about them a lot. Um, an emergency fund is really when when shit hits the fan, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So we that, all need that. <laughs> so that's money saved. Um, you know, uh, you get in a car wreck and you need to get a new car and you weren't planning for it. Um, you or your spouse loses a job and you need to cover the mortgage for a few months. Um, that's what the emergency fund is built for. It is not built for planned expenses. It's unplanned expenses. Um, and a rule of thumb, it's for everybody to kind of do what makes them feel comfortable. But usually people suggest you do six months of your mortgage payment. Um, I know people do a year. If you're really conservative, it's really up to you. Uh, on the other hand, you have a sinking fund and that is planned expenses. So that trip to Europe, um, you know, friends are getting married, you know, you're going to have to pay for that. Um, just any kind of incidentals you're saving for a remodel, you're looking to upgrade your kitchen. Those are planned expenses that you're saving, but both of those would do really well in the high yield savings account environment because you want to keep it cash. You don't want to invest that money because you don't want it to fluctuate drastically, but you want to earn some interest on it, right? And I do want to make mention that um, Elise and I 
do offer our clients high yield savings accounts. So this is not something that you just have to go to the bank and get. This is something that we can help you with, which is why Elise and I have no excuse not to be taking advantage of this ourselves. I know. <laughs> um, so I'm going to pivot and talk a little bit about what I use as a cash alternative. And it's it's a silly website called Be Frugal. And a lot of people may not have even heard of it. But basically, for those of you that are online shoppers like I am, um, you can go on there and, and you basically select the store that you're going to be buying from. And if it's one of the listed stores, you get a percentage back. And I'm going to be honest, I booked my vacation through Expedia. And I got almost 4% of my trip back on Be Frugal. And so I took that couple hundred dollars and it then paid for my hotel room the night before I fly out. And so that's one of the ways that I'm very cheap. <laughs> I, again, I try not to leave money on the table. And, and for those of you that, it, that again, that you just like to do the online shopping and you have big purchases, mm -hmm. befrugal.com is a great way. I especially you, utilize that um, website when I was building my home. And Elise, you need to look into this while you're doing your remodel. That's a great um, idea. Yes, because for appliances that are several thousand dollars, um, I remember that I got back probably a couple thousand dollars off of this website, and it's literally just a few extra clicks of the button. I, I don't know if I would say it's worth it for like a thirty dollar, yeah, like, on clothing spree, but if you're looking at a vacation that's a couple thousand or a remodel that's maybe tens of thousands before you even know it. Um, then, then it would be worth doing the the click of the button. Um, something else besides be frugal that I'm very passionate about um, is credit card points. So I will say one of the common questions that Elise and I get is is probably about credit cards. Do we like credit cards? Mm -hmm. um, and and I will say for me personally, I I love credit cards, and for my clients, I encourage credit cards if they're going to pay them off every month, right, Elise? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Twice a month um, would be even better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because interest rates right now, what did we say the other day? It's like, what, 27%? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. 24? Mm -hmm. I don't remember now the number. It was in the 20s, which it is was, mind blowing. Exactly. So if you're going to get a credit card, there is no point in like having those points if you're going to carry the interest on it. It defeats the entire purpose. But what I do personally with my points is, um, I saved up all the points to the end of the year and I don't have a Christmas budget. I cash in my points and I pay for Christmas. That's what my kids are going to get. Um, and then also I did not, my kids, I went cheap on their, their presents this year. So I decided for Christmas, we're going to be making memories. And so I ended up paying for like most of the trip to Mexico for spring break that we're about to leave on with my credit card points. So again, so I booked through Expedia and got my be frugal. 4% back. <laughs> and then I used to take our point. So I would say all in all for me to go to Mexico with my two kids, maybe I'm paying a couple hundred dollars by the time I cashed in points and got the refund back. Yeah. So again, I just feel like these are great cash alternatives that people need to be taking advantage of. Absolutely. And I think like finding a credit card that gives you the most back for where you spend the most is mm -hmm. also important. So like doing that little bit of extra research on a Saturday and just finding a credit card, like if you are a big traveler, getting something like Chase that really serves you. But if you also are like me and just do all your shopping online, like Bank of America gives you a lot back if you're an online shopper. So just finding the one that works for you. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think again, we those. also need to throw out there that for our clients, Elise and I are here to discuss all this with you and guide you on um, what credit cards that we utilize and what we think would be a good fit for you. Absolutely. And um, rolling into our next topic. So I'm going to touch on CDs, which we touch on a lot. But in the past couple months, another thing that's become really popular with our clients and most investors are money markets uh, mm -hmm. because they're yielding a higher interest rate than ever before. Um, and a popular one we really like to use is JP Morgan's. And I was looking today at the numbers and it is yielding 5.11, which is so awesome. So that's 
again, it's a cash alternative. It's not invested in the stock market. Um, and you can put your money in, you can get it back in one day and it's gaining and it's earning that interest. So that's another really great thing. If you do have cash, but you know, you're going to need it in a short period of time, it's something to really consider. Um, and that's just somewhat something you need to reach out to Holly and I about, because we can do it in your accounts with us, um, and kind of walk you through the steps, but It's always good to consider if you are sitting on a bunch of cash, you need to be doing something with it because if it's sitting in the bank, earning nothing, you're really losing. Um, And on the other note, that brings me to certificates of deposit, which I think since about 2000, the start of 2022, I have done more CDs than I ever thought I ever would. Absolutely. (laughs) And that was a big misconception you know, we wanted to get over because a lot of people think you have to get CDs through the bank. You do not. You can get them in your investment accounts with us. So, and we have good rates. Um, We're not limited. We can get from banks all over the country. So our rates are going to be pretty competitive with those at your bank, probably even a little bit higher. Um, And that's another thing that's just a service we offer to our clients. And it's a really great option for people, again, looking for something FDIC insured. Um, I think it's FDIC insured up to $250,000. So you know that money is safe and secure no matter what bank we choose. Yeah, and I think we also need to mention that um, we do have a little bit more flexibility in the length of our CDs. Um, We can get very short-term CDs that are two to three months. Mm -hmm. And again, they're earning right now. Last time I looked, it was like five point to APR. So still, it's still pretty good. Um, and, and the banks here, at least where I'm from, it's like they can do six months or they can do a year. Um, but they really can't do sometimes this in between. And so if if you already have an account that's set up with this, these CVs are great. And I will also say that they're even, um, they're even good for nonprofits that have to be very careful on how they invest. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, most nonprofits are not going to want to throw their money into the stock market that that can be very volatile at times. So these CDs are wonderful options for them, too. Yeah, absolutely. So I think just a bunch of great information on cash. Who knew there were so many options without mm-hmm. even touching the stock market? Um, But if anyone has any questions, everyone knows to reach out to Holly or I. We'd love to talk to you more on this topic. This is our mandatory disclosure statement. Elise Levy with Legacy Wealth Planning in Reno, Nevada. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice offered through Mariner Independent Advisor Network, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Mariner Independent Advisor Network, LLC, and Legacy Wealth Planning are separate entities from LPL Financial. Holly Henry with River Valley Wealth Management near Mena, Arkansas. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member FINRA SIPC.